All right, welcome back, fellow scientists. So today we are on our last learning objective, which is relating photosynthesis and cellular respiration to food webs and energy pyramids. So go ahead and open up to a new page. I'll grab a new page right about here. Um, and the, the fancy word that we're going to look at today is ecology. And I'll just be boring and use black today. So go ahead and write down ecology. And our definition of ecology is how living things interact with each other and their environment. Interact with each other and their environment. Right, so specifically, we're going to be looking at this idea that energy flows through an ecosystem. That's our, that's our big idea for today. So go ahead and write that down. Energy flows. Energy flows. All right, in the next video, we're going to talk about how matter cycles, which is, which is different. So you got to keep those two things in mind. With ecology, two big ideas, energy flows and matter cycles. Okay, so this video, we're looking at how energy flows through an ecosystem. A really simple way to look at that is a food chain. And I have three different food chains right here. We all remember this from second grade, so I'm not going not gonna to belabor the point. Um, but basically, the corn gets its energy from photosynthesis. So the corn, remember, we talked about is an autotroph. You remember autotroph is, is like self-eater, or it makes its own food through photosynthesis, right? And then some of that food it uses back um, in, the, in the roots and in the stalk of the corn plant and does photosynthesis. But then some of that food, it, it makes seeds. And then other things, like this little mouse right here, eats the corn. And so the reason why this arrow is going from the corn to the mouse is because energy is flowing from the corn to the mouse. So the mouse gets nice and fat and happy, and then it can't run as fast, and then it gets eaten by an owl. So the energy flows as the owl eats the mouse. It flows from the mouse to the owl, right? So everyone's familiar with food chains. Here's just another example of food chain, carrot to rabbit to fox to lion, and then grass to grasshopper to frog to snake to, uh, to eagle or condor or vulture or whatever, whatever that is. Okay, so that's our idea of a food chain, all right? And that's what we studied in elementary school. Um, so now we're gonna kind of going to look at a food web. So <clears throat> go ahead and write this down, food web. So a food web is simply a series of interconnected food chains. Series of interconnected chains. Perfect. And this recognizes that a grizzly bear doesn't just eat deer. It doesn't just eat berries and flowers. It doesn't just eat marmots. It doesn't just eat chipmunks. But in reality, it eats all of those things, right? And even this food web with all the arrows going, going every which way isn't even complete because everything, once it dies, right, is eaten by fungus and detritivores and bacteria. Um, and they're, they're the decomposers, right? So this one only has the deer right, when it dies, being eaten by the, by the decomposer and the, and the detritivores. But you, you get the idea, right, that a food web is a series of interconnected food chains. So now, as we analyze our food web, we're going to look at trophic levels. Trophic level. So you remember autotroph, heterotroph, we said troph kind of means eating or feeding. So a trophic level is, you can kind of think of it as a feeding level. All right, so here we go. First trophic level, we're going to say is primary producer. So primary producers, those are our autotrophs. Right, so primary producers would be the seeds that are made by plants that get their energy through photosynthesis, grasses, photosynthesis, berries and flowers, photosynthesis. So th these right here, let me go ahead and circle them. These are our primary producers. All right, next level up are the things that eat the primary producers. So they're not producers, they're consumers. 
right? And so we call them primary consumers. So I'm just going to make little ditto marks. Like the ditto mark means, you know, that's the same word as above. Consumer. So primary consumer. So all of our consumers now are heterotrophs. So they have to eat other things. They can't make their own food and eat their own food, but they have to, they have to ingest other organisms um, to, to get their energy. So this butterfly that eats the grass would be a primary consumer. The deer that eats the, eats the berries and flowers would be a primary consumer. All right. So then the next level up, not primary consumers, but secondary consumers. Secondary consumers, still heterotrophs, and these are things that eat the primary consumers. So if the bear eats the deer, which eats the berries, the bear is a primary, or sorry, a secondary consumer. Now, if the bear eats the berries directly, now the bear is a primary consumer. All right, and we can even look at the red-tailed hawk right here. So in this in this food chain, it, we kind of top out at tertiary consumer, right? So tertiary, T-E-R, T-I-A-R-Y, tertiary consumer, right? So that's going to be like the hawk that eats the grouse, that eats the butterfly, that eats the grass, right? So primary producer, and then primary consumer, and then secondary consumer, and then tertiary consumer, right? So you see how that works. So those, so those are our trophic levels. And we could even go all the way back to elementary again, and we could say that our primary consumers are herbivores because they just eat plants. So a deer is a herbivore, right? We could say that the secondary consumers, um, some of them could be, could be omnivores. So like the grizzly bear eats the deer, but the grizzly bear also eats the berries and flowers. So they eat meat, they also eat vegetables, right? Tertiary consumer, now you're getting into carnivore, right? So the, so the red-tailed hawk, tertiary consumer, it, it's not going to eat any vegetables. It only eats marmot or chipmunk or grouse, and, and that's it. Um, so if you wanted to kind of relate those words that you already know to our trophic levels, uh, that, that might be useful. Okay, so another way, remember, our big idea is energy flowing. Right, so another way to look at energy flowing is with a trophic or an energy pyramid. So energy pyramid, oops, energy pyramid. And here we have our trophic levels. We have our producers and we have our primary consumers and secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. And energy pyramid looks at the amount of energy available at each trophic level, all right? And to calculate this, we use something called the 10% rule. 10% rule. So the 10% rule basically looks at this idea that only 10% of the energy in one trophic level is available to the next trophic level. So let's go ahead and write that down. Only 10% of the energy. I'm just gonna abbreviate energy with a big E because I want to get going, only 10% of the energy at one trophic level, I'm going to abbreviate trophic level TL, at one trophic level is available to the next. To the next trophic level. All right, sweet. So our producers, that forms the base of our, of our triangle. So we're going to just, whatever, whatever we have for producer, that's 100% of the energy available to this ecosystem, right? Primary consumers then, like the butterfly or like the deer, right, we can only have 10% of the total energy available in this ecosystem is available to primary consumers. Secondary consumers, uh, like the bear that eats the deer, excuse me, they only have 1% of the energy in the ecosystem available. And then the red-tailed hawk, which was our example of our tertiary consumer, only has 0.1% of the energy uh, available. So the energy available really, really indicates population size or more specifically biomass. So biomass is the amount of weight that a specific trophic level takes up. So let's say that we have 10,000 10,000 pounds of berries, right? 10,000 pounds of berries. So how many pounds of deer would we get from 10,000 pounds of berries? Well, we would get about 1,000, 10%, 1,000 pounds of deer. 
okay, well, how many bears or how many pounds of bear would we get from those thousand pounds of, of deer? Well, we would only get 100 pounds of bear. Right, and and then it tops out because the red-tailed hawks don't don't eat the don't eat the bear. But you kind of get the idea. So we can use this 10% rule as a good estimation of of how many organisms, or more more specifically, how how much biomass there is at each uh, at each trophic level. And oh, by the way, this has implications for the human population, right? If all of us are secondary consumers, if all of us are meatarians, right, then the human population can't be as large. Um, possibly, some people even think as it is today. Some people think if everyone just ate meat all the time, number one, there'd be you know high incidence of, of heart disease. But number two, we couldn't have this population of, of seven to eight billion people, right? However, if all of us were vegetarians all the time, uh, number one, we might be a little bit healthier, right? And number two, we could have a bigger population. No longer are we, are we limited at like five billion, but now we can have like 50 billion right? People, people on earth. So if you're concerned about overpopulation, overcrowding on the earth, eat vegetables. <laughs> that's, that's the big takeaway. No, actually, the big takeaway is that energy flows through, through an ecosystem. So this has been Mr. Leo. Today, we looked at how energy flows through an ecosystem. The next video, we will look at how matter cycles through an ecosystem. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on the flip side.